Not okay, good. so uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, welcome to Hali to our mass series. Uh, uh, he's a newcomer to this series, but we hope that he will continue working with us and, and he has a wonderful things to offer. Uh, Zuhan, uh, let me say a few words about Zuhan. Zuhan uh, got his bachelor's degree in Taiwan, and then he decided to come to the U.S. I was very fortunate to welcome uh, Zuhan to my research group uh, many years ago. Uh, he spent uh, several years, uh, I don't remember how many years, or five or six years, uh, at Florida State University and the National, National Hemagnetic Field Laboratory working with me um, on various problems. And um, during this time, he really learned a lot, not only from uh, myself, but also from uh, other people there, including Nicola Lanata, who was a postdoc and who developed uh, one of the new methods, uh, variational methods to study strongly correlated electronic systems in the presence of, uh, uh, in, in a realistic setting, uh, by using uh, first principle uh, best structure calculations together with many body methods. This is what Sukhan worked on uh, uh, some of it uh, as a postdoc, and he continued this. Um, in I think in 2018, he completed his PhD and he joined uh, a research group of Gabi Kotliar at Rutgers as a postdoc, and he spent, I believe, um, uh, four or five years there. He was extremely, he has been extremely productive. I worked with Gabi and also with some other people there. Uh, on various things, but he, his main expertise is in this uh, rotationally variant slide boson method that he really helped develop together with this so-called ghost extension that allows much more accurate and uh, realistic calculations and solve some long-standing problems. So uh, after this, uh, finishing his postdoc with Gabi Kotliar, uh, he joined um, uh, the National uh, uh, Chung Cheng University in Taiwan uh, as a faculty member as an assistant professor just a few months ago and now he's starting a wonderful new career and we hope to uh, be able to welcome him within must and to uh, and to uh, to really learn from him and use maybe some of his ideas and methods in in our own work so Tsuhan, without further ado welcome to uh, must okay yeah thanks uh Vlad for uh, the very nice introduction. And um, today uh, I'm going to present this uh, ghost rotationally invariance lay boson, uh, which is a method that we have uh, de -level, uh, developed back uh, in uh, Florida State University with Vlad and Nicola. And um, I would like to show that uh, it is uh, one of the uh, quite efficient approach and at the same time accurate approach to strongly correlating material. And um, I'm going to start uh, my talk. Um, so yeah, so uh, the uh, system that uh, we are interested in is this uh, strongly correlating materials, where uh, inside these correlating materials, they are a strong coupling between the uh, electrons, spins, charge, and orbital uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, which can lead to many interesting phenomena uh, reflected in their uh, magnetism, uh, electric transport, uh, optics properties, or uh, thermodynamics. So one of the example is this um, uh, uh, this uh, calcium strontium ruthenate oxide, where the strong correlation effect can lead to a very complicated phase diagram. Uh, for example, this is a phase diagram for this uh, material uh, where we dope it from calcium to strontium and, uh, and as a function of temperature. And we can see that there's a, a transition from a different types of magnetic ordering phase. Uh, and also they are transition from metal to insulator. And, um, and also very interestingly in these uh, correlating materials, uh, oftentimes we can find uh, unconventional superconductivities. Uh, for example, the cuprate, uh, ruthenate, iron base, and recently the nickel base uh, superconductors, uh, which are uh, can all come from these classes of uh, strongly correlating materials. Uh, so one of the problem to study these uh, materials is that uh, if we directly use the density functional theory or uh, single particle types of approaches, uh, we cannot reliably predict uh, the properties 
uh, for these uh, materials. And therefore it is uh, very important that uh, we have to uh, develop many party approaches uh, such that uh, we can uh, explain the phenomenon or even predict the properties of these strongly correlated materials uh, use it from the initial perspective. Um, so one of the approach that uh, I have been uh, focusing on is this quantum embedding approaches. Uh, and the, um, the idea is that uh, if we consider uh, interacting lattice, where um, if, uh, the, if we want to solve this uh, system directly, uh, we have to deal with uh, exponentially large uh, numbers of the Hilbert space, which grows as the uh, powers of two to the powers of the uh, total numbers of the sites times orbitals and time spin. And therefore it is impossible to store these uh, large numbers of the uh, matrices or uh, states in the computer. So we have to apply a, uh, approximation um, to uh, this kind of uh, interacting lattice system. And um, so here it comes the idea of quantum embedding. And the common idea in these approaches is that uh, um, we can map uh, this interacting lattice uh, into an impurity model uh, by selecting one atoms. Uh, and we include the interactions on this atom. And then for the rest of the environment, uh, we can uh, map it to uh, effective medium. And then this uh, interacting lattice model can be uh, mapped to this quantum impurity model. Then uh, there are some self-consistency condition that can allow us to uh, solve these uh, two systems self-consistently. As, and then uh, from this uh, convergence solution, we can uh, study um, the properties of this original interacting lattice. So uh, within this class of approaches, there are uh, dynamical mean field theory, uh, which is one of the most uh, successful approach to uh, these uh, correlating materials. And another one is the rotationally invariant stable zone. Uh, which is equivalent to the Guzwiller approximation. And it will be the main uh, topics of this talk. And besides of these two, there are also other uh, quite popular approach uh, such as uh, self-energy embedding theory and density matrix uh, embedding theory, which has some uh, close connection to uh, the rotationally invariant slave also. So yeah, as I have mentioned, uh, the most uh, popular example is the, uh, in, within this quantum embedding approach uh, is this dynamical mean field theory, where uh, we can uh, uh, assume that the uh, self energy for the interacting lattice is local. And then uh, one can approximately map this interacting lattice to uh, a quantum impurity model where we have an atom that contains all the local interaction, uh, which is coupled to an effective median uh, describing by this hybridization function. Then uh, the self-consistency condition uh, requires us to match the local uh, Green's function of this interacting lattice uh, with this uh, impurity Green's function. And we can solve these two systems uh, self-consistently uh, until these two quantities are uh, matched with each other, then we can use this information uh, to uh, study the property of the correlated uh, interacting systems. And so this approach uh, is known to be exact in infinite dimension. And it is also uh, quite uh, accurate if we want to study a uh, correlated system or materials, which is uh, uh, three-dimensional or two-dimensional if it is uh, far from um, quantum critical point where uh, the spatial fluctuation is less relevant. So, um, and the early DMFT result 
uh, is very, uh, is mostly, so here I will show some uh, early DMFT results that, yeah, I believe there are many experts in uh, uh, this um, uh, collaboration uh, has already known about this approach, uh, but I will so, uh, just briefly go through uh, what this method can do. Uh, so the early DMFT approach uh, is mainly focusing on the Hubble model, where um, we have this Hubble Hamiltonian, and there's uh, T terms describes the uh, hopping of the electron from psi i to another psi uh, plus one. And there is also another Coulomb interaction U that describes the on-site Coulomb interaction where the, if the two uh, electrons occupy the same sites, then uh, it will cause the, uh, this uh, energy Coulomb U. Um, um, so we can see that this uh, kinetic coupling term and this uh, Coulomb interaction term uh, will compete each, each other. So if when the Coulomb interaction becomes very large, then the electron will not like this uh, double occupied uh, configuration. So if the system is half filled, then the electron will not like to hop around to create uh, this type of uh, double occupied uh, configuration. So um, we can expect that when the Coulomb interaction becomes very large, then uh, the system will be an uh, insulator, while when there is no uh, Coulomb interaction, uh, the system will be a metal. So we will expect that if we uh, tune uh, the Coulomb interaction from small to large value, then there will be a metal to insulator transition, uh, which is called mud insulator transition. So DMFT uh, is very successful in describes this behavior. And this is the uh, phase diagram of this DMFT approach where uh, if we uh, increase the Coulomb interaction from small to large, then well, there will be a first order transition from metal to insulator. And uh, DMFT can also capture quite accurately this transition from metal to insulator, where as one increase the Coulomb interaction, um, we will have, um, um, uh, so the peaks around the Fermi level, which is known to be a quasi-particle peak, uh, will be uh, narrower and narrower. And then uh, there will be an additional two low energy and high energy bands emerge from, uh, that is originated from the fluctuation of the uh, atomic multiplets, and which is known to be Hubble band. And as we increase the Coulomb interaction, the middle peak, uh, which is the quasi-particle peak, will be narrower and narrower. And then uh, at, after the metal insulator transition, the quasi-particle peak will disappear. And then there will be only uh, uh, two Hubble band exists in the density of state, and they are separated by a gap, uh, uh, which is um, uh, proportional to the Coulomb interaction. And this type of uh, insulator is known to be a uh, multi-insulator. So this phase diagram uh, is, uh, can explain the metal insulator transition, uh, for, for example, in this uh, vanadium oxide very well, where the S1 tunes the pressure, uh, which is corresponding to uh, decreasing the Coulomb interaction. Then in D1 can observe a transition from a metal to insulator, and there will be no uh, structure or uh, magnetic transition, uh, which uh, it is known that uh, today that uh, probably only this uh, DMFT approach can uh, or relevant approach can expand this type of uh, uh, metal insulator transition without uh, symmetry bro broken uh, uh, phases. Um, so DMFT can also be combined with the uh, DFT approach uh, to simulate strongly correlating material. And it is very successful if one want to study uh, the RPES. Uh, for example, in this Rusine oxides, uh, the dots here are uh, the RPS data 
and the backgrounds are DMFT simulation. And it shows quite a good agreement if one wants to study these uh, uh, strongly correlated um, oxides. And it is also quite successful if one wants to simulate, for example, uh, neutron scattering spectra, which corresponds to the spin sensibility. And here it is a function of momentum and the energy. And the left hand side is the experiment and the right hand side is DMFT. And we can also see that DMFT get a quite good uh, spin excitation in this uh, uh, co uh, correct energy scale compared to uh, the experiments. And recently it is also possible to uh, simulate the phonon, um, phonon uh, properties uh, of the correlating materials and shown a quite good agreement between the theory, which are the lines and the experiment, uh, which are the dots here. So it is very good that DFT plus DMFT can do many things. Um, but uh, in order to get this type of um, spectra, um, so you typically one needs to utilize uh, DMFT and with the CTQMC impurity solver, and it typically will require the use of a large number of uh, CPUs and hours to days of calculation in order to uh, get this kind of uh, spectroscopy. Um, therefore, uh, it is now um, also quite important that it to ask if we have uh, alternative methods uh, that is more efficient and can allow us to get a similar information uh, for the strongly correlated materials. So this leads to um, the top topics of this talk, uh, which uh, is based on this uh, rotationally invariance lay boson. And I will first briefly uh, is, explain this risk approach. Uh, it is an approach that is uh, aims to study the multi orbital Haber model, where uh, instead of uh, previously described Haber model. In this multi-orbital Haber model, we have this uh, additional indexes M, M prime, uh, that is uh, used to describe the uh, orbitals uh, on each atoms. And we can see that uh, now the Coulomb interaction is not uh, just a number, it is a, a tensor, which has these four uh, indexes. So uh, RISC is designed to uh, tackle this uh, multi-orbital Haber model. And the idea of RISC is that uh, based on this labels on mapping, where um, for each uh, local Hilbert states, uh, um, we can um, write it in terms of to a product of uh, boson states that is described by this uh, slave boson uh, creation operator that has uh, two indexes. One index uh, will link to the original local Hilbert states, and another index will uh, uh, link to a copy of uh, these states, uh, which we typically call it as a quasi particle flux state uh, that can describe the uh, quasi particle excitations. And yeah, and it is. Uh, yeah, it can be written into these uh, flux states. So within this labels on mapping, um, the original electron operators uh, can be written into a product of a boson operator that we call R, which is a function of this slave boson operator times uh, this uh, quasi-particle fermion creation operator. So it is a product of a bosonic operator and a fermionic operator. And because we have enlarged uh, these uh, local Hilbert states to a product of a boson and a quasi-particle flux state, uh, we have to enforce uh, additional constraints so that uh, our solution will be in the physical space. So here are two of the risk constraints, where the first one enforces the total boson number uh, in our um, brain work has to be one. And then the second one constraint is a gauge constraint, uh, 
uh, where when we perform a gate transformation simultaneously on phi and the f together, then uh, this our uh, Lagrangian will be uh, gauge invariant. So together with this, uh, we can write down the Lagrangian of our risk approach and then solve uh, the derive the set of point equations. And uh, in the so in the nutshell is that um, um, yeah, in the nutshell of this approach, um, I will just uh, describe schematically. Uh, how we will solve this uh, label zone um, uh, approach. So the, and how, what is the main idea of the, this uh, stable zone approach in terms of the quantum embedding? So um, the idea of our risk approach is that given uh, interacting lattice, risk uh, will first map uh, this interacting lattice to a non-interacting lattice. Uh, which is called uh, quasi-particle Hamiltonian. And uh, where the hopping of this Hamiltonian uh, will be renormalized by a factor of the R, uh, which is the uh, which is the oh, sorry. Uh, oops, uh, sorry. Uh, Yeah. So, which is the uh the set of uh which is the um this uh re, uh matrix R here uh at the uh set within the set of point approximation it will becomes a number, and it and this R will renormalize the hopping from uh one of the non interacting site to another non interacting site, and then risk will also uh re introduce a local one body potential. Uh, in this non-interacting Hamiltonian. So, and this is the first step of risk. And, and then the second step of the risk is that it will map this interacting lattice uh, into an impurity problem where we have this impurity, which contains uh, all the local uh, multi-orbital interaction. While for the rest of the environments, uh, we will map it to another atom. And this atom has the same numbers of the orbital uh, as these uh, impurity atoms. So um, yeah, so RISP will map this uh, interacting lattice into these two problem, which is described by these um, uh, parameters, uh, R describing a renormalized hopping uh, in this quasi particle Hamiltonian and the one body potential lambda. And then there's also two parameter D and lambda C describing the hybridization between the impurity and environment. And lambda C describes the uh, potential on this uh, environment atom. And then we have to solve uh, these two uh, reference system uh, self consistently. Uh, by matching the uh, density matrix on this uh, uh, impurity problem uh, with the density matrix of this non-interacting Hamiltonian, and then so 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 the so once this uh, uh, solution, and then we have to solve this R lambda D lambda C self consistently such that uh, we can find that uh, our uh, this the density of these two systems will match with each other uh, uh, through these uh, two equations. So we can see that different from DMFT, um, so in this self-consistent uh, C calculation, we only need to compute the static density uh, matrix. Uh, so this uh, will make, and also we only need to solve these two sites impurity problem so this makes our uh, this uh, risk framework uh, very efficient compared to the uh, DMFT or other dynamical type of the embedding approach. So that this makes this uh, risk uh, one of the 
uh, most uh, efficient approach to study uh, strongly correlated uh, systems. So these are some of the um, example that shows DFT plus risk uh, is quite successful approach uh, for a correlated heavy fermion system where one can study the uh, equation of state of this uh, material uh, where with one can change the volume and study the uh, energy and the pressure. And it is known that there's a, in this material, as one increase the pressure, there will be a transition uh, from um, FCC to alpha uranium type structure. And here we can uh, here we can see that um, by computing the energy versus volume curve, and uh, one can see that there is a transition indeed from uh, FCC, which is the red curve, and to uh, alpha uranium in the black curve. And uh, one can also see that uh, by uh, doing the derivative of this uh, energy uh, with respect to the volume curve, we can get the pressure versus the volume curve. And this curve also agrees quite well uh, with the uh, experimental data, which are uh, the dots here. So it shows that uh, this DFT plus risk approach uh, is quite successful if we want to study a heavy fermion system. Um, however, uh, the problem comes out when we want to study um, the system that has um, where the mod uh, physics becomes important, uh, which uh, is uh, corresponds to this uh, chromium oxide, manganese oxide, and iron oxide, and cobalt oxide. And here, uh, we would like to study if DFT plus RIS uh, can uh, accurately uh, capture the correct crystal structure uh, for this um, material. And we will select these four different type of uh, crystal structure, and we will uh, and we compare the energy of this structure and we will see uh, if RISC can capture the correct uh, stable structure for this material. So here, um, yeah, in the x-axis, um, uh, it corresponds to this, uh, uh, so this selective um, uh, transition metal oxide, sulfide and selenide. And in the y-axis, it uh, it corresponds to the unicell uh, volume. And the circle are the experiment observation and the triangles are the, um, um, the unicell volume, stable unicell volume calculated from DFT plus risk. And the half field and field later observed in the experiment or uh, in our calculation. And we can see that uh, with these uh, realist parameters, uh, U equals to AEV and J is to, equals to 0.9 EV, uh, we can get the correct crystal structure for uh, these four compounds. But for iron oxide and cobalt oxide, uh, we can see that RISC uh, still predict these two materials to be in the metal phase. Um, therefore, with these realistic parameters, we cannot get the correct crystal structure uh, for these oxides. And we found that we have to use a very large uh, Coulomb interaction. And, and once we use this large Coulomb interaction, then uh, we can get a quite good agreement uh, with, uh, between our DFT plus risk and, uh, um, uh, and the experiment. So this... It's good, so, but, so can you just remind yeah. us uh, if uh, uh, if this is done with the DMFT rather than RISP, do, can you use a smaller U and get a correct result? Uh, you mean if we use DMFT, uh, yeah. if we mm -hmm. can get a correct result? Yeah, with the, with the smaller value of U. Yeah, yeah, I think with the DMFT, this, with these uh, released parameters, we can get the correct result. But okay. with RISP, we have to use uh, this uh, very large U uh, mm -hmm. right. to get this uh, good agreement. So it is good, but at the same time, yeah, there's, there's also some deficiency. So it, which means that DFT plus RISP approach still need to have some improvement. And also another uh, 
another um drawback or some uh the um some deficiency of this risk approach uh is that when describing the metal into insulator transition uh in DMFT we will have this uh, narrowing of the quasi particle band and the emergence of the uh, high energy atomic excitation Haber band but in risk we can only describe this narrowing of the quasi particle peaks but uh, there will be no um, Haber bands uh, it emerges. And so in the multi insulating phase, uh, we will just get a, a empty uh, density of state. So this is a quite good approximation uh, to a multi insulator. And, and obviously, it violation, violates the, uh, some, ru some rule of, for the spectral wave. And therefore, it can also provide uh, quite uh, not uh, inaccurate kinetic energy, especially in the multi insulator. So this is one of the reasons that we cannot get a very accurate uh, total energy when we want to describe the multi insulator. So this uh, leads to our recent development of this uh, ghost risk approach uh, that uh, we that can solve this uh, problem that uh the that um we cannot accurately describe the muffixes so that so here i will first go back to um the idea of uh, risk approach so um in previously i have uh, described that um the slay boson approach uh in the slay boson approach we will create a local hybrid state uh which is a copy uh, we we will create this uh, quasi-particle fog state, uh, which is a copy of the local Hilbert state. So the number of the orbitals in this fog state and the uh, lo local Hilbert states is uh, identical. And also the number of the quasi-particle uh, is the number of the orbitals in for this quasi-particle uh, will be identical to the number of the orbitals uh, in this uh, physical uh, electron. So um, within the set point uh, approximation, uh, where the R becomes simply a number, uh, the number of the quasi-particle orbital, for example, in the one band case, we only have a one quasi-particle that is enough to, uh, that only is enough for us to describe the uh, narrowing of the uh, quasi-particle peak. So um, the idea of ghost risk is that uh, we can add more and more uh, orbital into the quasi-particle states. And then, so we will enlarge this uh, quasi-particle space, but, but, and, but um, we still, uh, but this uh, local Hilbert state still lives in the uh, original physical Hilbert state. So we can view this uh, boson operator uh, as some kind of projector that map this enlarged space uh, back to uh, this uh, physical uh, local Hilbert state. And similarly, we will, because we enlarge the number of the quasi-particle in the quasi-particle flux state, uh, we will have more quasi-particle orbitals uh, in this uh, F uh, creation operator. And we can also view this R matrix where at the set point, approximation that it becomes a number uh, which is a matrix uh, and it's a and then this matrix will map this uh, enlarged uh, quasi particle orbitals back to the physical number of the orbitals and so uh, within this uh, idea of adding more ghost orbitals into the quasi particle flux state we can see that these additional ghost orbitals uh, will allow us to uh, capture high uh, these high energy excitations. Uh, for example, if we add two additional ghost orbital into this uh, quasi particle space, then we will have one quasi, uh, ghost orbitals that can allow us to describe the renormalization of the middle band, and the additional two ghost orbitals will uh, allow us to describe the uh, high energy uh, atomic excitation, which is the upper bands. So this is the main idea of uh, our ghost approach. 
uh, ghost risk approach that we will add additional ghost orbital uh, into the system. And then this additional ghost orbital will allow us to uh, describe more and more uh, high energy citations. As, yeah, this is the consequence uh, that I say that we will have this phi and R, it becomes a rectangular matrix. And they are acting like a projector that project the enlarged uh, Fox states back to the local orbital, uh, local Hilbert states. Yeah, and yeah, so this is the main idea of ghost rift. And there is just a minimal uh, modification of the algorithm uh, between risk and G risk. So previously, um, uh, the um, risk will map an interacting lattice to a non-interacting lattice. But the difference in juries is that uh, when we perform this mapping, because we have added more uh, quasi-particle orbital, so um, the number of the orbitals at each side uh, will be enlarged. So if we add, for example, here two additional ghost orbitals, then the number of the orbitals at each side uh, will be one plus the other two ghost orbitals. And similarly for the impurity model, uh, previously in risk, we only have uh, two atoms. Uh, one is the impurity, uh, the other is the uh, bad orbital. And since we have add additional two ghost orbitals, then in the environment, we will have these two additional ghost orbitals. And but and so so but but the and so the difference is just the R matrix will also be in large lambda will also be in large because it describes the hopping and the potential of this uh multi orbital problem non interacting multi orbital multi orbital problem and also the uh, lambda C will be in large because we have more uh best orbital. Uh, but we still, but the self-consistency condition is still governed uh, by the same two equation, uh, except that these indexes A, B are in charge. Uh, but, and, the, and we only still only need to uh, solve, uh, compute the, just the static density matrix of these two systems uh, to perform the self-consistency condition. So, so, so this also makes uh, this jury's approach um, uh, quite more accurate if we compare to uh, the uh, algorithm like DMFT, where we require the calculation of the dynamical uh, self-energy or um, uh, Green's function uh, to perform the self-consistency calculations. Yeah, so this is the summary of this approach. So, and, um, so we can now see that in this jury's um, impurity model, uh, we can see that if we can imagine that we can add more and more best orbitals, then it becomes very similar to DMFT with ED solver. And if one add more, enough best orbitals, it is possible that we can reach uh, the uh, DMFT limit where the best orbital will be a continuum and it will be an Anderson uh, impurity model. So this uh, leads us to think that if we, if our jury's approach uh, can uh, approach to the uh, exact DMFT limit uh, where the, uh, uh, on this uh, infinite dimensional bed lattice. So, um, to check this, uh, we try to add um, uh, um, more and more best orbitals into uh, or ghost orbitals into our jury's approach. And here it shows the uh, numbers of uh, orbitals that we increase from one, which is the standard risk, to three, five, and seven. And the x axis shows the double occupancy and total energy. And we can see that uh, by adding uh, two additional ghost orbitals, uh, we can get a uh, very, uh, uh, very good double occupancy and total energy uh, if we compare to the exact DMFT limits. And as we add more and more, and it converges to uh, these uh, exact values 
Uh, so, sorry, uh, Suhan, uh, can you just clarify what are the, why uh, are the red points for DMFT with different number of orbitals? I thought this NB is a number within RISP, within GHOST, but what is what what does it mean within DMFT? Yeah, yeah. So here we saw that DMFT also discretized the number of the beta oh. orbitals. Okay. So it's solved using ED solver. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So here we can see some of the advantage of juries that uh, for the static properties, is, it looks like convergence faster uh, than DMFT. And um, yeah, also it has uh, this, uh, uh, it uh, satisfy the variational principle that uh, the energy converge to uh, exact uh, value from above. So yeah, these are the two observations uh, that we uh, found in this jury's approach. So, so, and, and this is for uh, for which temperature and uh, and uh, do you have convergence difference in convergence in number of B number of orbitals if you go from small U to large U and if you go to lower temperatures? Yeah, so so for risk risk or juries um it work uh it, it technically works uh good better at low temperature and so for this calculation we um uh calculated uh we, we computed in uh, for the ground state mm -hmm. and um yeah and we haven't checked the uh, finite temperature performance for this approach uh, yeah. because okay. yeah, because at some temperature, the boson will not condense and and at that time, then this approach will break down. Yeah, but, so. But, but does the convergence with NB depend on uh, para U parameter regime you're in. Will you have a different convergence? Will be five, seven, and up, or you have to different, much more bigger number for different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the static quantities, uh, we found that uh, it juries usually converge with the uh, three additional paths. To it's it, it usually is very good already with the uh, three additional path orbitals, and it doesn't depends very uh, much on the parameter regions. So yeah, that's what, what we have observed even in the multi-orbital case. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So also as I have mentioned, we can, juries can also capture the um, high energy hyper excitations. And we also did some small number of the best calculation and we can see here that um, if we add more and more ghost orbital or into paths, we can capture higher uh, numbers of the high energy, more numbers of the high energy excitations, which uh, looks quite similar to uh, DMFT with the ED solvers. So yeah, and another thing is that to compute this Green's function, uh, we don't need to use land shows uh, to, for the excitation. Uh, we only need the static variables R and the lambda and the dispersion, hopping dispersion, then we can construct the Green's function. And, and this has to be integrated. Yeah, yeah this uh, Green's function. Yeah, so this is also one of the nice feature that um, we don't need to use, um, for example, uh, land shows or um, time-dependent algorithm to compute the uh, Green's functions or excitations. Yeah, so these are for the one-band model. Uh, we have also uh, tried to combine our juries with the uh, density functional theory to test uh, the performance on materials. And the idea is, um, is identical to DFT plus uh, uh, DMFT where uh, we can solve the quotient equations and then select the energy windows to construct the um, hopping and the cooling interaction for the, the, the low energy multi-orbital model. 
And then using juries, we can map the interacting lattice model to these two reference system. And then we sell them self consistently. Yeah, and then we can compute the charge and embed it back to DFT. So it is uh, identical to DFT plus RIS and also DMFT. Um, so we try to compare uh, our approach with the DMFT uh, using the same uh, DFT code and the same projector. Uh, implemented by um, Professor Hongdae. And here are the charge self consistency LDA plus Jury's total energy for two uh, very uh, standard material. Uh, one is for the correlating material, which is the strontium vanadium oxide. Another is nickel oxide. And uh, we can see that uh, for this, um, uh, strontium rusinate oxide, um, the LDA plus RIS uh, total energy is still quite far away from LDA plus DMFT. But if we use the LDA plus juries with the uh, total uh, best side of nine, and we can get a quite good total energy compared to LDA plus DMFT. And for nickel oxides with these uh, realistic parameters, and we use MB equals to seven, uh, we can see that using LDA plus RIS, we get a very, uh, not very good energy if we compare to LDA plus DMFT, uh, which is because it is still in the uh, methodic space. And, but if we use LDA plus juries, we can also see a good improvement of the energy and the energy is in quantitative uh, agreement with uh, um, this uh, LDA plus DMFT code developed by uh, Professor Hongley. Yeah, so yeah, this is also look quite promising. Uh, we have also tried to compute the DFT plus uh, jury spectral function, uh, particularly for this nickel oxide where RISP has some problem to get the uh, insulating phase. Uh, which we can see here in RISP, uh, we still get a, a, a method of behavior, uh, just uh, the only difference is just the bands become narrower, but in juries, we are able to get a, a lower hover band and upper hover band, and the position uh, is quite good if we compare to DMFT, uh, except that we uh, cannot get a, a this incoherent feature uh, because of the finite size effect. Uh, but overall, the agreement is uh, quite good. Uh, this is some of the comparison of, comparison on this uh, XPS spectra between DFT plus DMFT and juries, and which is uh, also similar. And this is just some uh, preliminary comparison, which uh, cannot be trust uh, very, uh, yeah, trust very seriously, but it just to show that for the charge cell consistency condition, uh, cell charge cell consistency calculation, uh, jury is quite fast uh, and compared to DMFT. Um, oh, sorry, can I, oh, sorry, can I interrupt yeah. you for a second? Remember you showed us some results previously, which was risk, you have to go to much larger U, to, uh, to capture similar behavior for, oh, remember you have shown that. And what about this ghost G risk? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we would like to check it uh, in, in our next step. Okay. Uh, yeah, because the energy looks quite good here. So yeah, I think um, it will be, uh, yeah, it will be, yeah, they, they will compare good. Uh, yeah, and we, we would like to perform. Yeah, yeah, do these checks. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, this is some, uh, is my conclusion for the talk. And so, here um, I show that juries uh, is a relatively efficient approach uh, because it is a static approach. Uh, so, it is in principle uh, more efficient compared to the dynamical type of the embedding approach. And we also show that juries has a systematically improved accuracy if one increased the number of the paths 
or the number of the ghost orbital. And, um, and we have observed that in uh, most of the case, the static observable uh, injuries uh, converge faster than uh, DMFT with the ED solver uh, with increasing MD. And juries also captures the dynamical spectral functions uh, and uh, also um, DFT plug juries can be combined with DFT and which gives quite accurate total energy and uh, decent spectral function for correlating materials. So uh, there are some of the outlook of the approach uh, because we have only explore uh, exact diagonalization as our solver. So they are also solver that can be explored in uh, within this approach. And there are also ways that we can compute um, uh, susceptibility and uh, uh, interaction vertices and which can be uh, done, uh, generalized to uh, ghost trees. And as also recently the uh, non-equilibrium dynamics generalization, where uh, it's shown here for the result from uh, Gerucci. Uh, this is the result of uh, dynamics as a function of time and the double occupancy uh, for a uh, uh, cooling interaction quench. And the dots are the DMFT with the uh, QNC. And then we can also observe a improvement of the dynamics uh, when we increase the number of the uh, ghost orbitals from one to seven. So it is also uh, quite promising. And uh, because our approach um, uh, captured quite good uh, total energy, so it will also be interesting in the future to uh, work on the forces and also to study the phonon. And also, uh, it could also have a good application to correlate it to topological materials. So yeah, and um, and finally, I would like to acknowledge it, my uh, which uh, Gabriel Cotier, uh, who is my uh, postdoc supervisor, and Vlad, uh, who is my uh, PhD uh, su supervisor, and my collaborators Nicola Lanata and Yongxin Yao, Corey and Ron Enderer uh, for their collaborations and their helps for uh, the research. And uh, for this, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and yeah, for your questions.